Would you like to learn about audio compression and watch me getting punched in the face by him? You're definitely in the right place. I'm about to explain what compression is and how it works. I'll go over the key parameters of compression and I'll use me getting punched to help explain. It'll be fun. I'll also go over a few specific examples of how to actually use compression in your mix. As a bonus, I'll also explain limiters at the end of this video. I'm Danny Brain, and this is the Music Production Lab. Let's get to it. Understanding compression is essential for music producers, and really anyone working with audio, like content creators and podcast teams. Compression can be used in many ways. The standard use is to reduce the difference in volume between the loudest and quietest parts of a piece of audio. This can be really helpful on vocals or a bass line, for example, that have a high dynamic range. It helps smooth things out. This way of using compression can help to make it sound more balanced and consistent. It also lets you increase the overall loudness since those audio peaks won't be as high. Compression can also be helpful to apply to a whole mix to glue it together. You've probably heard that term thrown around. Also, compression can be used for side chaining or ducking. Another use of compression is to shape drums. I'll cover that later in the video. Before I get into the details of how compressors work, I'll show you an audio clip with and without compression applied to give you a rough idea of what a compressor does. Notice how these audio peaks aren't as high as compared to the original audio. The compressed audio is a lot more consistent and has a smaller dynamic range, meaning the difference in volume between the high peaks and the low peaks is smaller compared to the original audio. Okay, now that you have a general idea of what compression does, let's take a closer look at those key parameters that you'll see on most compressors. And we'll use me getting punched to help explain. The key parameters on a compressor are threshold, ratio, attack, release, and gain. We're using the Ableton compressor in this video, but these parameters apply to pretty much all compressors out there. Threshold is the volume where the compressor will kick in. It's usually measured in decibels. The peaks of audio above this threshold volume will get squashed down to be quieter. The parts where the volume is already below the threshold won't be affected, unless you have a longer release time, but I'll explain that a little later. Watch this audio as I lower the threshold of the compressor. We'll start with a high threshold. When the threshold is above the audio peaks, nothing happens. But when the threshold is lowered, notice how the parts of audio above the threshold will get squashed down. So now to me getting punched. This is Bruiser, world-class athlete. If the audio going into the compressor is a flurry of punches and I'm the compressor, my body will absorb some of those punches that have more distance to them, making those swings shorter. Okay, so back to the threshold parameter that we just talked about. If I stand outside of Bruiser's reach, there's no impact, literally, to me or to the audio. This is like a high threshold. The compressor isn't doing anything to the audio. As I lower the threshold, which means I get closer and closer, I start to get hit. I start to make his longer distance swings shorter because my body will catch them. When this happens, it's like I'm squashing down parts of the audio. The volume peaks are not as high. Now I'm lowering the threshold. This is great. This is fun. Now let's get back to the actual compressor. The next parameter on a compressor is the ratio, which is how much the louder parts of audio above the threshold will get squeezed down. A higher ratio will squeeze more, and a lower ratio will squeeze less. For example, a ratio of 4 to 1 means for every 4 decibels above the threshold, only 1 decibel will pass through. On this audio clip, notice when I increase the ratio, the peaks go down farther and farther. I'll start with a low ratio and move it up. And now, more punching. 
If I stand strong and sturdy and try not to let the punches move me, the long punches will get squashed quite a bit. This is like a high ratio. This is not a good strategy if you're getting punched, but it can work well with audio. If I'm flimsy, on the other hand, I only compress the punches a little bit, and they only get a little shorter when they hit me. It also doesn't hurt as much. This is like a lower ratio. Now let's get back to the real compressor. The next parameter on a compressor is attack time. Attack time controls how quickly the compressor kicks in when the threshold is passed. A short attack time means the compression effect starts quickly. This is good for vocals or bass lines, for example, if you want to smooth out the track and make it more consistent. On the flip side, a longer attack time means it takes more time for the compressor to kick in. This can be helpful if you want to add more punch to your drums, for example. You can put a compressor with a longer attack on your drum layer or drum bus, and with a longer attack, it won't impact the transient, which is the initial hit. But it will compress the tail of the drum hit, adding more punch. Listen as I slide this attack from a short time to a longer time. Watch the audio peaks and the tails of the drum hits. If I stand here catching the punches right as they come in, it's like a short attack. I'm compressing the punches right away. A longer attack would be like if I stand further away, and after I see a long punch past the threshold, I slow it down. Now onto the next parameter. Release controls how long it takes the compressor to stop squeezing the audio after the volume of your audio input drops back below the threshold. So if I only wanted to squash the peaks themselves, a shorter release time would be best. Watch what happens to this audio sample when I increase the release time. A short release would be like, after the long punch hits me, I only impact that punch that hits me, the one that passes the threshold. A longer release would be like, after I shorten that long punch, for a period of time, I also shorten all other punches. And now back to the real compressor. Gain is used if you want to increase the output volume to make up for any volume decrease from the compression. It's pretty self-explanatory, but let's watch and listen as I increase the gain. Now you can see what I mean when I say compression lets you increase the overall loudness of a track, because notice how these peaks are pretty much the same volume as they were before but the tails of these hits are a lot louder than they were before. And also these smaller peaks are a lot louder. Another control that many audio effects, including compression, will have is the dry-wet knob. Sometimes it's called mix. This is the percentage of affected audio that you hear. If it's set to 100% wet, you'll only hear the audio with the effect. 0% will be the original audio with no effect. If it's set to 50%, it's half and half. Listen as I adjust wetness. I don't really know how to relate the dry wet knob to getting punched, so. I'm 100% wet. So that's it for how compression works. And now as promised, I'll quickly explain limiters. 
Limiters are extremely similar to typical compressors, except that while compressors reduce the audio signal above the threshold, limiters act as a brick wall and prevent that audio signal from passing that threshold. On limiters, the threshold is usually called the ceiling. You can think of a limiter like a compressor with an infinity to one ratio and an ultra fast attack and release. That's it for this video. Punch that like button if you enjoyed watching me get punched or if you learned something useful. Also, if you wanna learn the basics of Ableton Live and you wanna make a beat with me, check out my other video here. I'll also put a link in the description below. I'm Danny Brain and this is the Music Production Lab. Thanks for watching. Now I need an ice pack.